Topic of the day, how to make a leather seat cushion for an antique Gus Stickley rocking chair. Stick around, we'll jump right into it. So I wanted to detail how to make a leather seat cushion for this antique Gus Stickley rocker. It's a number 319, it's a very large rocking chair. It's built in the early 1900s and it's just a beautiful chair. We did some wood restoration on it. You can find that in a separate video on my channel. Right now we're focusing on how to make the seat cushion. We're gonna start from the wood frame, the springs, adding padding, all the details for a good decking base, and then adding the leather upholstery. The particular details of this one, instead of having piping on our seat cushion, we actually have a blind stitch plus a top stitch detail. So let's get into the process, step by step, of making that seat cushion. Okay, so first look under the seat cushion, we popped off the dust cover and we're seeing all kinds of crazy things. There, this has obviously been torn apart and put back together incorrectly and then had a number of failures since then. Metal plates for kind of DIY repairs and a scabbed in wood piece in an attempt to kind of support some of the springs. So we'll have to tear this apart a little further. So a decision was made to not use this old seat frame. We just feel like it's beyond repair. Somebody's been in here multiple times and it didn't go back together right. There's no jute webbing or straps to support the bottom of the springs. Half the springs are actually in upside down. Um, they used the jute webbing on the top. Um, just everything is backwards on this. And we looked at replacement spring bars. Um, they come in kits and nothing lays out right. We'd have to go from 12 springs down to nine to get everything to fit. So we're gonna scrap the frame and do what we usually do, rebuild the seat frame and install zigzag springs. The new frame will be made from ash lumber and that's a great hardwood to use when you're building seat frames because it takes tacks really well. And the idea here is that the left and right piece are a little bit wider than the front and back piece. So we can make square joinery and trim the angle to fit the chair after the fact. So the hardwood frame has come out of the clamps. Our half laps are all dried and ready to go. We've struck a line here indicating the taper that the seat frame needs to have to fit in the chair opening. And it's just a lot easier to do it this way, build square joinery and then cut the angle after the glue dries. And there's really no benefit to trying to create angled joinery for seat frames. Just build them square and cut the angle after the fact. So these are the zigzag springs and you just cut them according to how many lobes there are. And we figured out for our particular seat frame we need 13 full lobes. So we cut those with a bolt cutter. And then you have the little tricky situation where the end of the coil spring bends away. And what you actually need it to do is hook back towards the spring. Here's one that's been bent. So we're going to bend these springs to hook the tips back this direction so they can't slip off of the clips. And to do that, I'll just use my little homemade spring bender. Uh, C.S. Osborne makes a commercially available one. If you want to just go out and buy one, that's the easy route to go. I had some angle iron and some pieces in the shop that I was able to just cobble one together. That seems to work just fine. So as long as you can bend that tip towards the rest of the zigzag spring, you'll be in good shape. Okay, so once you have the ends formed on your zig springs, helps if you have two people, but you just want to apply some pressure and stretch them down over your clips. Here we have those mounted with a single screw so far, and then we'll add long upholstery tacks to anchor everything down. So the little hook on the end of the zigzag spring may seem trivial, but it's actually what prevents this spring from pulling out of the clip during regular use.
Now we need to pad the deck somehow. You can use traditional deck pad, which is half inch thick. It's usually white and it looks like tough, dense batting. Another option is to use these carpet runners so long as they're rubber backed. These are tough enough to keep springs from poking through and they really work well. So since height is a major concern on this cushion, we're going to use these carpet runners because they're the thinnest available material that's still a good choice. We'll just stretch that down and install it with half inch upholstery staples. Well now we're at one of the most interesting and rewarding parts of the upholstery process and that's doing the mock-up with foam. Get your seat height right in relation to the armrest and you'll have a comfortable chair. Luckily we have a three inch backrest cushion that we borrowed from another Morris chair to use as part of the mock-up. So a little bit of 3M Super 77 will help us spray glue the layers of foam together. We're starting with a one inch layer of medium foam and on top of that we'll add this purple layer of two inch very soft 1818 foam and we'll start building up the layers. Overall we're shooting for four inches of foam on this seat cushion. So our goal when we're gluing in these lower layers of foam is to stay one inch back from the front edge of the wood seat frame so that when we roll our top one inch layer over, it has that nice spot to tuck into. The net effect is that easy bull nose transition on the front of the cushion. So we're using a full layer of high loft Dacron on top. That's about three quarters of an inch thick. For the sides, you really don't need it for cushioning. So we're gonna split that down the middle and just use half a piece cover up the sides. So that'll go on with spray adhesive. We'll do the same to the other side and then it's on to patterning the leather. So let's talk about patterning for the pieces that you'll use to sew the cover for the seat cushion. Now everybody thinks sewing is the hardest part of upholstery and it's really not. Getting good at template work is really what will push you forward as an upholsterer. And what you want to do is make a template for the sides. You'll notice that this stands one inch taller than the sides. Basically all we've done here is we've used a piece of poster board. Let the poster board project one inch down below the seat frame. That'll just account for the wrap under to attach the leather. From there, just trace around the shape of your cushion to make your template. Cut out the poster board template, and this is basically all the information you need for the sides of your cushions. It's also helpful to draw out a little diagram right on the template to indicate what size is the top panel. You basically need to know the length at the front from seam to seam, the length at the back from seam to seam, and those dimensions you want to add an inch, that's half an inch for seam allowance on either side, and then subtract about a quarter inch for every 10 inches of panel length to account for leather stretch. The final number you'll need to get is the total length of the top panel. Compress the batting slightly as you take this measurement and remember to account for one inch at the front and one inch at the back for wrap under. On the big top panel for this seat, you'll need to account for leather stretch both across the width and across the length. Again, my rule of thumb is subtract a quarter inch for every 10 inches of panel length. On the side panels, however, you won't need to account for anything additional, just this template. Okay, it stands a little tall, remember, because we added one inch for the wrap under. Beyond that, this is just the tracing and I've cut out to my line. Don't account for seam allowance on the side panels and don't account for leather stretch on the side panels. Just simply cutting a template to the exact size of the side of the cushion plus one inch wrap under once you sew it up with a half inch seam allowance, this will come out just right. You'll get a lot of clues about how the cushion's going to fit by doing a basic test fitting. 
Particularly notice this area. The cushion should fit comfortably between the front legs. If it doesn't, you'll wind up with some wrinkles here in the finished cushion. Let's see if we've got some good matching thread in the old sewing cabinet. Oh yeah, there's deep brown. Go ahead and staple the top panel to the side panels. A little plier stapler is great to attach the top panel to a side panel before sewing them up with a blind seam. Okay, we'll just sew up the cover with a blind stitch. Back tack a little bit to get going. And we'll sew all the way around the perimeter of each seam. your staples before you top stitch. So we just have the seam allowance turned towards the boxing side and we increased our stitch length slightly in order to make this top stitch. Now you do have to gently spread the seam open a little bit as you top stitch for best results but top stitching is something you can quickly get the hang of and it's really not that much different than laying any other stitch like a blind stitch. Leather in general likes to have a longer stitch length than cloth for instance. Well another fun part in the process here we can start pulling our cover down over the seat and let that begin to take shape. We'll flip that over and get it centered. Okay, a couple things to help us out here. We've got a center line marked at the front and back, and we also have a pull-to line that I've marked with a Sharpie pen. It's just one inch in from the outside of the wooden seat frame. So as we align our cover, we've got a little center notch there. Line that with the center point of the frame, if you can, and uh, set a couple staples. We'll start at the front here. Just a couple staples there. Really consider those temporary at this point just because we want to roughly center this and then turn it top side to make any corrections as needed before we go crazy with our staple gun. Again at the back we'll just go ahead and get a couple shots in. Then maybe a couple on the side here. The final side here. Okay, that's to our line pretty good. Let's just flip it over and see if we're starting to get centered left to right here. Yeah, there's still a lot of slack to be pulled out. Of course, we only have a few staples set, but looks like we're on the right track with that. Okay, let's do some more work along the front edge here. Always keeping our reference line in mind. Sometimes you'll pull right to it. Sometimes you'll make a conscious decision to pull a little further or not quite that far, but it's a good reference to have. And we're going to go all the way to the corner on this front edge. If at all possible, you'd like to do more than just one staple at a time. And of course, I'm just sighting down the front of the cushion here for the best vantage. I think where a lot of people get in trouble is they, they pull to their line and they get one staple in and then they pull to their line and it actually winds up just creating some extra wrinkles unnecessarily. Okay, so 
So we've got a, a pretty good line developing across the front. This is an antique rocker, so I'm going for not a loose look, but I don't want it to be bow strong either. I want it to just be a nice soft cushion. So, Okay, now we're on the back side. Now we've got the front anchored, so we're going to have to actually pull a little bit. There's some resistance to getting this to the line now. Previously we weren't feeling any resistance because we were just kind of setting our first starting point. But not bad, not bad. I, I like the way that that's coming together. And I'm always kind of sighting down this line, looking for wrinkles, looking for any bulky spots, and it's coming along just fine. We'll go ahead and carry on out to, to that back corner now. We're using uh, 3 8 inch fine wire 22 gauge upholstery staples. That's looking great. Got to be a little ambidextrous, I guess, in this profession. Again, all the way out to the corner. So now we'd like to flip it over again. A lot has happened since we last checked. And so just make sure that that front edge especially is looking the way you want. Now, of course, we don't have anything drawn down on the sides yet, so I think that's quite respectable for this point in the process. We'll go ahead and flip that cushion back over, and we'll pick a side, and we'll start at the front edge and kind of work that side up to the draw line. And here's another corner that it looks like we'll be able to pull right to our line. Switch to a little bit longer staple and button that corner down. Leather responds really well to a little hammering common in leather crafting and leather upholstery as well. Okay, time for a quick and easy dust cover. If you had half inch staples for buttoning down the corners, just go ahead and switch over to something smaller. Quarter inch or three eighths inch length will work fine. And just kind of fold under your edges of this non-woven dust cambric. And we'll just tack it in place. fitting looks good, it drops right in, nice snug fit but not too tight and very importantly the seams kind of fit right between the front legs just as we were shooting for so so far so good on the cushion we'll get to work on the backrest. All right guys those are the details on how to make your own leather seat cushion for an antique Gus Stickley rocker. Maybe you want to give some of these techniques a try or at least know what to ask for if you do decide to hire a professional upholsterer. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.